the good thing about Marty is that really he has this movie in his head already. So the way we work together is that I looked at his shot list, um, then we look at the locations together, and we figure out if his shots would work on a location like this or that. So there is no discussion actually on the set anymore. I mean, we talk about shots, but it's not like we're trying to figure out what it's gonna be. So we know what's gonna be. There are many times that we didn't do any coverage at all. Thank you, sir. All right, I'll see you later. Thanks. What are you doing? You leaving your car? I never even knew when we were making it what that scene was. I never knew. I had I was clueless. I'd never even seen a steady cam. And that doesn't exist in the book. But it does in just a couple of lines. Except a couple of lines in the book in the hands of the director, that's where you begin to see a nonfiction book in detail really blossom into a kind of art. How you doing? Good, good. What's up? There you go. The whole idea is that it had to be done in one take, so you don't feel that it was a series of cuts or that there was a separation between him and the world that he was trying to get into. The camera flowed through and, and just glided through this world. Just all, all the doors opened to him and everything just slipped away. It was like heaven. And then to emerge like a king and queen, this was the highest he could aspire to. It was kind of tricky also to get all the actions right because Marty is so very accurate about every single timing. You know, what the people do in the kitchen. The guy with the table comes at the right time and brings the table over. All these things are very important. But as far as I remember, we shot the scene only eight times, and it was not even a full day. But we wanted it really in one shot, and we got it in one shot. Take my wife, please. <laughs>